Do you think you know how infinite banking works? This is part two of a three-part series. My name is Darius. And I'm Carmen. For the best infinite banking and financial advice, subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell to be notified when we post new videos. All right, since we are beginning with part number two, we're gonna be talking about the motion of money and how it relates to you funding a life insurance policy. Because if you remember, part one was all about the banking functions in your life. So remember, as we go through these videos, we just wanna help you understand the concept. The policies will come, the interest rates will come, all of the numbers will come. But we just wanna make sure that you're focused on the right things, which is the infinite banking process, which is what happens when you fund a life insurance policy. Policy. Now this is the part where if you haven't seen part number one, you're going to stop and go and take a look at part number one before proceeding on to the next section. Now for those of you who have seen it, what we're going to do is switch our screen so that you can see exactly what we mean as we illustrate this concept. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is part two of how does infinite banking work? And we always wanna start with a refresher just to make sure that we're on the same page. So with part one, we talked about how the banks are currently owning your lifestyle, and we wanna help you replace the banking functions in your life. So remember, we have the banks and then we have you. And in this instance, if we talk about it from a business standpoint, we have the seller versus the consumer. So the banks are the seller. They are the ones selling their products and services to us who are the consumers. And in this instance, we are paying massive amount of interest on a monthly, quarterly, and annual basis to the seller. So all we wanna teach you to do is how to get back the interest that you are paying to the banks in fees and services so you can keep more of this money for yourself. Because if you are currently paying $1,200 a month, like the example that we shared in part one, just in interest, this is a massive amount of money that is leaving your household on a monthly and annual basis that you could keep for yourself in order to create wealth for your family. Now that you are aware that the banks own your lifestyle, we want you to own your own lifestyle. So in this case, you are going to create your own banking system that will allow you to finance your lifestyle and keep the interest payments for yourself. Now when we say create your own bank or create your own banking system, you're not actually gonna go out and build your own brick and mortar bank. All we're doing is utilizing a life insurance policy to take over the banking functions in your life. And what this action allows you to do is to become the seller and the consumer because you are one and the same. You own the banking function and you will also be utilizing the banking function to finance your lifestyle. Now, in order to own your own lifestyle, this is going to take massive amount of discipline and focus because now that you're the seller and the consumer, you have to treat yourself the exact same way you would the bank and maintain the interest payments that you would be paying a third party. So if we recap the traditional flow of money, if you remember in part one, how we ended the presentation was that you will be using your savings account to work for you. Because right now the average interest rate that banks are paying is 0.09%. And we want you to be able to earn more interest. And right now inside a whole life insurance policy, they are paying a guaranteed 4% compounded interest rate. Now just take a minute and, and look at this slide. When we talk about the financial industry, there is so much advice out there, and we don't want you to overcomplicate the process. All we want you to do is look at the numbers and let it speak for themselves. Would you rather earn 0.09% inside a savings account or 4%? Regardless of where you put your money, you should want to earn the most interest possible by just relocating your savings into a different vehicle. Now let's recap the flow of money using the infinite banking concept as we fund a life insurance policy. The flow of money is going to be very similar. Step number one, your employee or your business pays you your salary. Step number two, the salary is deposited into your personal bank account. Step three is where it changes. Instead of using your income to deposit it into a savings account, we're instead going to take our income and deposit it into a life insurance policy. Why? Because we want our savings to earn more interest. It's simply that. Do not overcomplicate this step. Step number four, continue to pay your bills. 
the mortgage, the rent, the credit card, the car, the student loans, continue to pay those items exactly the same way. Let's take a look at this summary. You're paid by your employer or your business. Your salary then goes into your checking account. From your checking account, you take your income and you pay yourself first in your policy, and then you pay your bills. Because here's what the traditional flow of money was. You're paid by your employer or your business. Your income goes into your checking account and then you pay yourself first in your savings account. And then you pay your bills. The only difference here is we are paying ourselves first in our life insurance policy. Now let's add our bills into this summary. We're not going to change anything. We're still using our income to pay our bills. We're paying a house note, we're paying our car note, we're paying our credit cards and our student loans. The addition that we're adding to this is our life insurance policy because we're going to self-finance our house, our car, our credit cards, and our student loans using our own banking system. When we talk about self-financing, we use our life insurance policy to either more aggressively pay these items off or finance it outright so that we can put ourselves in a position to earn that interest versus pay the interest to the bank. If you don't have any of these consumer debts, congratulations. You are a small percentage of the population. You still are able to use the process to pay for your groceries, your vacation, your lifestyle, your utilities, because these are still bills that we have to pay. And the point is for you to pay these bills using your life insurance policies so that you can have that money to reuse over and over again for the same purposes. And for those of us who do have consumer debts, this is the situation that we want to aspire to have because we want to own our own lifestyle. And that includes every single dollar that we give away. We want to be able to put ourselves in a position to get it back. Now, we, what we want to do is show you the flow of money using a whole life insurance policy. Let's say year number one, you have $11,000 premium. The cash value inside this premium is $6,600. The balance on our credit card is $6,354 at a 19.24% interest rate. Our monthly payment is $212.65. As we make these payments, half of it is going towards interest and the other half is going towards principal. So the next step is we're going to borrow the $6,354 from our life insurance policy, which leaves us with a cash available of $246. Now our credit card is paid off. What are we going to do with this $212.65 that we were paying every single month? And where was it coming from again? It was coming from our income. Remember, we were taking our income and paying our bills. Now that the credit card is paid off, what are we gonna do with this 212 now? Remember, this is money that is coming from our income. Now all we're gonna do is pay ourselves the $212.65 into the life insurance policy. Because remember, we are creating our own banking system. And all we're going to do is funnel the money that we were paying to the bank, pay it to our life insurance policy. Because what we're building is we're going to build a system to take over more and more of the interest that was leaving our income. Remember, this is the amount of interest we were paying every single month to the banks. And the banks were owning our lifestyle. Now we are going to own our own lifestyle and take over more of the banking functions. All right, this is pretty exciting. We have already taken over one bill just by utilizing our life insurance policy. So now that we are paying $212.65 to our life insurance policy every single month, let's break down the numbers so that you can see how much money you are bringing back to your household. So just to recap, we're going to use our income and pay $212.65 back to the life insurance policy because we use the life insurance policy to pay off the credit card so that we could direct this $200 back to us and not to the bank. Let's review the terms that we were paying for the credit card. 
The credit card balance was $6,354 at 19.24% interest. And again, we were paying $212.65 to the bank. So you may be asking, how long am I gonna have to make this $212 payment to my life insurance policy? Well, if you do the math, and Darius and I did it for you, to determine how long you were going to be making this minimum payment. And you were going to be making this payment for 41 months. That's a really long time to be paying someone else $200 every single month. The $212 you're paying to the bank is allowing them to cash flow every single month. So all we're going to do is treat ourselves the exact same way we would a bank. Remember, we are now the seller and the consumer at the same time. So we are going to pay $212.65 for 41 months. And when we do the math to figure out how much money that is over this period of time, that ends up being $8,718.65. Now let's put this into perspective. This is the amount of money that you would have paid the banks knowing these terms that were based on your statement. So you would have paid an additional $23.64.65 in interest just to the banks. But now, because you own your own lifestyle and you are controlling where your money is going, this $2,300 is now going into your life insurance policy that is allowing you to keep more and more of your money that was leaving your house. So now you can take this $8,700 and use it to finance other things in your life so you can start taking over more and more of the banking functions in your life. And now that you've knocked out one credit card, what else do you think you can self-finance at this point? As you see, we already crossed out the credit cards, but the sky is the limit when we think about banking. Every time you swipe your debit card, you should be thinking about how can I get this money back now that you are aware of the infinite banking concept. So as you see, all of these examples that we have on the screen here, this just scratches the surface as far as what you can use your policy for to finance your lifestyle. We hope this video today is helping you understand the concept and that you're connecting the dots. So if you want to join a community of like-minded high achievers who are interested in the infinite banking concept and applying it in their lives, then join our Patreon community so that you can understand how to navigate this sometimes tricky space. And if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button, share it with a friend, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And remember to own your own lifestyle. Or someone else will.